Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth again, and we are in MRWC, and we are going to work on the last portion of Activity 3B1. Now, this is a revised activity that I made uh, because the first one was not student-friendly in respect to the format, and I revised some of the questions. Uh, but the intent and the meaning behind everything is the same. So we're going to get into... Uh, the last portion of it. So in part one, I discussed how to construct root two. And then after that, I discussed how to construct root eight minus two using the simplified form of root eight, which happens to be two rad two. Okay, and so constructing root eight minus two is the same thing as constructing two root two minus two, and I went from there. In the second portion, uh, or in the second video, I went into discussing how to discuss, uh, construct root 18, oh, sorry about that, root 18 minus 3, and we simplified root 18 to 3 root 2, and then we constructed root 2 again, and then 3 multiples of root 2, and then we subtracted 3 to find the end result. Okay, and so in part 2, I did that one, number 2, I also went into number 3 here on this construction, how to construct root 32 minus 4. And then in the last portion of that, in part two, I constructed uh, root 12 on the number line, and we simplified that to 2 rad 3 or 2 root 3. So I constructed root 3 first and then went to multiples of root 3, which obviously would be equal to root 12. So in this case, uh, in this part three video here, and uh, now we switch our focus on root 5 and root se uh, 7, and then compare that to root 12, because a very common misconception that is made with uh, with roots or radicals is that if you add root 7 and root 5 it's equal to root 12 so this activity here is really unique in that we find out that root 7 plus root 5 is not equal to root 12 and we're going to do that by showing you its location on the number line and then also talk about its decimal equivalent as well and make sense out of it that way as well okay so um Let's get right into it. Now, in order to construct root 5, there's many different ways you can do it. We talked about that in our previous uh, lesson, in, not in this video and not in the previous video, but with me in class. And there's many different ways to root, uh, construct root 5 and root 7. So one way, if we just talk about that a little bit first, okay, is to build a triangle. And again, I'm gonna, my goal first is to construct the square root of five. Now to do that, I'm gonna construct a, a right triangle uh, with the side lengths of root three and root two. And then you'll get root five here. And we know that's true uh, because we talked about how to use this, the Pythagorean theorem on this. So if you have sides root three, root two, and root five, where root five is on the hypotenuse, it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem, meaning that root three squared plus root two squared is equal to the square root of five squared. Why? Because 3 plus 2 is usually 5. So that's one way to construct root 5. Not the only way, but that's one way. Uh, the other way to do it, uh, that we could do actually, is to construct a, a right triangle this way, where this is 2 and this is 1, uh, and this is root 5. So we could do it this way as well. Uh, well, we, well, we might as well. I mean, we could do this many different ways. Why? Because 2 squared plus 1 squared is equal to the square root of 5 squared. Okay, why? Because 4 plus 1 is usually 5. Okay, so there's two ways to construct this. So if you're watching this video and you worked ahead and you did this on your own, uh, that's great. Uh, <laughs> you could construct this many different ways. And now, to get root 7, uh, you could use... Uh, let me see, there's many different ways to get root 7 as well. You could use root 5 and root 2. You can use uh, 2 and root 3. <laughs> many different ways. Uh, so let's see here. What would be the easiest way for you guys? So maybe maybe using the side lengths of 2 and 1. Let's, let's try it that way because we've constructed root 5 before. So let's construct, uh, let's use the second method here. Okay, like I said, there's different ways to do things. So let's go ahead and uh, get a compass here, and let's find the location of 2. 
Okay, so I'm going to construct a location of two. I'm going to switch hands here. So I adjust it from zero to one. Doesn't matter which side you start on. Now, again, you want to be really precise here, and I can't be totally like dead on accurate here, but this is pretty darn close right there. Zero to one. Let's go ahead and uh, make your arcs thin. Let's find two right here. Might as well just find, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, so, there we go. Let's bring this off to the side. Okay, and we label as we go, as I keep saying in all my videos here, uh, because it's important to know what you're doing. Okay, so there's two. Now I'm going to find three at the same time. So I'm going to come down here. It's already adjusted to length one. I'm going to switch hands right here. Keep everything in uh, black here. It's just so I can be consistent. All right, and then I'm going to mark off where three is. Okay, and just for funsies, I'm just going to mark off where four is just in case I need it just so that I can save time. So I'm going to mark off where two, three, and four are. Label as you go. Okay, so there's three, and there's four. Okay, how do I know? Well, I adjusted my compass from zero to one. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm going to choose a second method here because I think that might be easier for you guys. I already know where two is, a two-unit segment like this, so now I need to construct a perpendicular through two. So I can get this right angle here because we're dealing with right triangles. All right, so I'm going to construct a perpendicular bisector between one and three. It should go right between, uh, right through two because two is obviously in the middle of one and three. All right, so I'm going to open it up a little bit more than halfway, like I always do. All right, construct that perpendicular bisector right here. Switch hands, move over to three, do the same thing. Remember, you got to keep the same radius. All right. All right. Let's bring up our straight edge here. And let's construct the perpendicular bisector between one and three. And obviously, it should go right through two. All right. So keep your uh, lines thin and light. Here we go. Okay. Now, I want to construct this triangle here, as I said earlier, with base length two and the vertical side one, the two legs one and two. And then I'll get root five. Okay. So to do that, I need a segment length of one. So you pick up your your straight edge here. All right. Oh, excuse me, your compass right here. Sorry about that. And what you do is I need to adjust my compass of length one. To do that, you go between either one and two. Didn't mean to do that. So let's see here, between one and two, or between, you know, zero and one, one and two, between two and three, you just adjust it. Now watch this, you just come up here, and you mark off. Okay, now so I'm going to, okay, there's my, there's my donkey. Okay, for you guys know that I live on a ranch, pretty much, and I have all kinds of animals, and right now, mom is coming home, and she's, <laughs> uh, Okay, she is uh, in the back with all my animals, and so Donkey, he gets excited. So anyways, go back. Oops, that's too, too big. Oh, okay, again, keep your points small. Okay, so there we go. So let me uh, label these here. So I got point A here. Let's stay focused. Point B here, which is, and then point C down here at 2. There we go. And from A to B to C is a right triangle. All right with two sides the legs are two and one to get a hypotenuse length of root five okay so here we go let me line up a and b you've done this before with me before this is in previous construction so this should all sound the same all right for those of you guys who who uh have watched my videos before and have watched and listened and learned there we go oh shoot what's going on here something wrong let me find out hmm. okay let me try this again digital tools are great when they work something's not working right so hang on okay so 
triangle ABC, there we go, let me highlight that, is the triangle that we're working with right here. Uh, something's up with my digital tools here. There we go. Okay, so what I just did is I constructed this triangle. Base length is two. Uh, the vertical side is one. All right, so I have that here. So if I just label, this is the square root of five. All right, from here to here, from A to C is length two. From zero to two is length two. And from B to C is length one. All right, so this is one. So let me just put that off to the side. So B to C uh, is one. A to C is two. All right, and then hypotenuse AB is the square root of five. And you can check that with the Pythagorean theorem, which I already did earlier. Okay, so now I have the square root of five. So now what I need to do is I take my compass and I gotta find root five on the number line. Well, that's easy. Okay, just adjust it from A to C. And again, this is a video, right guys? Yeah, as I keep on saying in my lessons here. So if I go a little too fast, well, slow down, right? And go ahead and Listen to it again. It's go, go at your own pace is what I'm saying. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, construct root 5 on the number line. There we go. So you adjust it from A to B and rotate down. Okay, and notice that that has to be the same distance. All right, so I just found root 5 right here. So the square root of 5. We're going to call that, uh, let me see, A, B, C, we'll call that just D. Okay, so D, so that's point D at root 5. So from A to D now, from A to D is the square, uh, the square root of 5 as well. Why? Because we went from A to B and rotated down. So that's the same thing uh, as root 5. And notice it's greater than 2. And I talked about this earlier, root 5 is about 2.2, right? Which is obviously greater than two. And I ended up greater than two. So it makes sense. So when you do these constructions, your your answers and your locations on your number line have to make sense. Okay, so now I need root seven. So once I have root five, now I gotta get root seven. Okay, so now what I need to do, uh, to get root 7. Let's see here. There's different ways to do it, so let's talk about this. Root 7. Um, <laughs> well, I could use uh, sides 2 and root 3, but that would require me to, uh, if, if I need root 3, that means I have to construct root 2. And let me see. Uh, or I can use root 5. So to get root 7, let's draw a picture here. That's what I did in my former lessons. To get a hypotenuse length root 7, oops, sorry, put it back there. Okay, so root 7, I can, I know I can, that if one side's root 5, the other one can be root 2. All right, why? Because the, if you take the square root of 5 squared plus the square root of 2 squared, all right, you get the square root of 7 squared. Why? Because 5 plus 2 is 7 satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. So I need to construct root 2 and then use root 5 and root 2 to get root 7. Okay, this is one of many different ways to do this. Okay, so now I need to get root 2. Okay, so to do that, I need to make an isosceles triangle like I did in the very beginning, in the very first construction, this one here. So if I make the isosceles triangle with side lengths 1, all right, I can get root 2 easily. So I need to go back to the very first construction. So let's do that, okay? So here we go. So let's go down to our construction here. Oh, I have two compasses. Don't need two. Okay. So what we have uh, is what we need to have is root 2. So I need to construct a perpendicular through 1. Well, I already know how to do that, right? Because we learn from the past. Okay, that was the very first thing I taught you guys about a week ago. And that's why you have to know the basics. All right, oops. So let's, uh, let me move my compass over here. 
Okay, I'll open it up. I need to construct a perpendicular bisector through one. And I don't have that yet. So I need uh, to go a little bit more than halfway. So I'm going to go a little bit more than halfway. So notice that. This is from zero to one and a little bit more, right? A little bit more than halfway. Okay, so there you go. I'm going to construct... Uh, I'm going to use uh, blue color. Here we go. All right, so construct two arcs a little bit more than half uh, the distance from zero to two, so which means a little bit more than one unit long. So I do one arc at zero and another arc at two. Okay, so make sure you're precise here. Line it right up to there. There we go. Okay, construct the other arc. Here we go. Just did that. Now the intersected, those two blue arcs intersected above the line. Right about here, below the line, right down here. So grab your handy dandy straight edge and line them up. Okay, as I always say in all the different constructions, right? Wherever the two arcs intersect, you line them up. All right, and it should be perpendicular to the given line. All right, so here we go. I'm going to construct that perpendicular through one. Whoa, that's too dark, too thick. Always want them thin. There we go, I'm right through one. So now I have a right angle and a perpendicular at one. So there's my right angle. So now I need to make an isosceles right triangle. And I already have uh, the points I need. So right up here, this point right here, let's call it, uh, let's use the point E. And let's call this point down here, let's call it F. Triangle AEF is an isosceles right triangle. And it's going to give me the length of root two, right? AE is going to be length of root two. So let me draw that in. So let me grab the uh, my drawing tool. All right. So let's line up A to E, as I'm doing here. And again, this is a video, right, guys? So again, pause and play. Use it effectively. So pause and play. So I'll draw A, E. Better than that. I don't know why it's doing this. It's really weird. Uh, this is not... My digital tools are not working the way they normally do here. That's not happening, so I'm not sure what's going on. Let's see if I can make this happen here. Ah, here we go. No. It's much easier on paper and pencil, guys. Trust me. Okay, that's... My digital tools aren't working, but I'm going to keep on going here. Alright, so from A to E, so this is on my new uh, triangle here. A is uh, AEF is an isosceles red triangle. All right, AE is the square root of two. So I'm going to label this the square root of two. So what you do is you get your compass and adjust it from A to E. All right, that's root two. And then all you do is rotate down. That's what I did in the very first construction. Okay, so let me pick a different color here. Okay, so there we go. So let's put the compass off to the side. Now I have the square root of 2. Now remember, the square root of 2 is approximately about 1.4, right? And it's a little less than one and a half units. So this makes sense. I know I'm accurate. So I have root 2, and uh, I have root 5. Now all I need to do is go back to uh, the beginning here. So to get... Let's see here. Uh, to get root 7, where's my triangle there? Oh, yeah, right down here. To get root 7, uh, I need root 2 on the vertical. All right, and I already got root 5 on the horizontal. From A to D is root 5. Now I need to construct a perpendicular right here, the length of root 2. So I got to get a perpendicular first. Okay, no problem. I need two points equidistant from D. So let's get that. Okay, so I need two points equidistant from D. So a point on the left, a point on the right. Okay, so uh, it doesn't matter what radius you pick. You just need to locate two points equidistant from D. So just swing an arc, and you find two points equidistant from D. Easy. So put this off to the side. Okay, and let's mark those two points. Okay, now I'm going to call these points X and Y. 
just reference. Okay, so there's point X, and there's point Y. Now I use X and Y to construct two arcs up here up top. I'm going to keep everything in purple so I keep everything color coded. And I want to construct a perpendicular through D here. So I've got to construct right triangles. So open up your compass way up here. I'm going to construct two arcs, one at X and one at Y. And they're going to intersect. Watch this. Okay, the arcs are going to intersect. So just shift it over here at X and do the same thing. Watch this. See? See the, see the arcs intersect? No problem. Okay, and wherever they do, like right here, there's, here's their intersection point here. Let's call it W. All right, grab your straight edge here. And we're going to have a perpendicular right through uh, the point D here. See, look, look at that. It matches. Well, not matches. It lines up. Okay, so here we go. Perpendicular through D. Perfect. Ah. Okay. So once I get my perpendicular now, I just have to come almost done with the construction here. Now remember, I want, so on this triangle here, I got A, D, and, and my third point. So I've got A here. I've got D down here. This is just a sketch now. And now I need to find the third point. Uh, we'll call this point, I don't know, P, P up here. I'll label P in a minute. That's from D to P is length root 2. No problem. That's easy to get because guess what? I already constructed root 2. And root 2 is A to E. So right here, this is a critical step. Okay, I'm going to adjust my compass from A to E. Or readjust it, obviously. Okay. And try to be very accurate right here. So adjust your compass from A to E. And then you shift it over here at D. Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting a little crazy. You know what? Da -da. I didn't draw my my perpendicular. What happened here? My my digital tools didn't draw it. I need to... I don't know what happened there, guys. Oops. Ah, man, my... Uh, my digital tools aren't working. What happened? Come on. Uh, let's see here. Let's try this again. Okay, there we go. Goes right through D. Now we're rocking. Okay, so now I got to figure out D to up here. Up here has got to, I got to find root 2. So let me explain that again. I have to adjust my compass to root 2 again. So you go from A to E, which is root 2. Okay. Now bring it over at D. And mark where root 2 is. Okay, now so from since I adjusted it from A to E, which is root 2, then this distance from D to up here, let's call it P right here, that's also root 2. So D to P is root 2. D to P is root 2. Okay, and now I'm almost done with the construction. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust my compass actually not yet okay I'm gonna get my straight edge and I'm gonna draw my last triangle so from A to P so let's draw that this last triangle here going on here I'm not sure why the digital tools are not working perfectly but let's draw this triangle let me highlight it so I, I can show you what I'm talking about let me pick a different color so from no oh, not that's not it I'm sorry from D P down to A and going to this room. There is your triangle. These are the two triangles. So this was the sketch earlier. This was my goal. So I have the distance from A to D is rad 5 or root 5. Distance from D to P is root 2. And the distance from A to P is going to be root 7. So let's label that. 
if I can, to root 7. Okay, so distance from A to P is root 7. All right, and the last step of the construction is to, well, not the last, uh, second to the last, is to adjust the compass from A to P, which I hope I can do on this digital platform. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so I adjust it from A to P. All right, I can do it. This is bitching. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to pick, uh, what color should we pick here? Uh, I don't know, let's keep it, keep it black here. So here we go. So we're going to swing an arc down here. Huh. Okay, hang on, my, there we go. Yeah. All right, so swing an arc, here we go. So from P down, so I noticed the compass is from A to P, which is root seven, and you come down here, so you found the intersection point. So you just take your compass off to the side, label as you go. So here we go. So this point right here is gonna be rad seven. And let me see. So let me go back. So this point here, let me relabel this other one here. So this one was Y, and this one in red, that's rad 7. So let's call that, I don't know, some letter. Um, uh, T. Okay, so T. So T. So A to T is rad 7. Okay. So again, AP is root 7, and then A to T is root 7. Why? Because I used the radius, right? I adjusted from A to P, and then rotated down, and I found rad 7 on the number line. And notice it's greater than root 5, all right? I mean, root 7 is greater than root 5, all right, which is greater than 2. <laughs> I mean, it all makes sense. And, and just, just take a look at it, guys, on the, you know, get your calculator out and evaluate root 7 and root 5. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, now how do we get root 5 plus root 7? Well, that's easy to get too. Now we have to find the sum. So the last step of the construction, here we go, and let's finish up. I have root 7, now I'm going to go back and get root 5. Okay, so I readjust to root 5. So I, I have to go from A to D. So here we go. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. So adjust, readjust, here we go. Okay, so there is the uh, distance from A to D, which is rad 5, and then you shift it over here, look at this, and you shift it over to D, excuse me, not to D, to T, right? So, let's bring this over here, right there, and if, if this is root 5, my radius is set to root 5, I put it at root 7, mark off, okay, there we go, uh, let me make them thinner. Okay, so there we go. Now I get, that's root 5 right there. So let's call this uh, S right here. So from T to S, this is root 5. Okay, so root 7 plus root 5 should be give us point S. Okay, so root 7 plus the square root of 5, right? Okay, now let's just check that. Uh, let me pull up the calculator here, and let's just get a decimal equivalent and see if it kind of makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to clear this out. Okay, I'm going to enter in root 7, close it off, and then I'm going to add root 5. Okay, and I get about 4.88. Okay, 4.88. So as a decimal, this is equal to 4.88, roughly about 4.9. So it's less than 5. Okay? Now, to prove that it's less than 5, to see if I'm accurate, well, this is the, this is the scary part because, you know, I'm making a video, right? Oh, okay, so let's see if uh, Ainsworth is actually accurate here. Okay? This is the scary part because, you know, I'm running a, a lesson here. 
Okay, so let's switch hands here. Let's mark off one more unit after four. Let's mark off where five should be. So I have to reset my compass to one, right? So there is from three to four is length one. So you come over here, okay? And guess what? You mark off where five is. And right there, so there's five. So right here, let me, let me get this going here. So this is five. And notice that I said 4.88 is less than 5, okay? And so root 7 plus root 5 better be less than 5, and I am pretty darn accurate here. This is amazing. I'm pretty proud of myself, actually, because this is not easy to do on a computer. All right, trust me. This is the most complicated thing we've done so far, okay, that I've showed you. Okay, so there we go. I showed you one way to construct root 5, one way to construct root 7, and then the sum of them on the number line. And then I backed it up with a calculator, okay? We said that root 7 plus root 5 was actually equal to about 4.88 or roughly 4.9, which is less than 5. And I showed you that it was less than 5 on the number line. So whenever you do these constructions, you're, you know, whatever you do, or whatever you end up with has to make sense, okay? And again, this is only one of many ways to do this. Now watch this. This is another cool part here. How does this compare to root 12? Because a lot of people think that root 7 plus root 5 is root 12. Okay, but root 7, all right, plus the root 5, all right, does not equal the square root of 12. And I'll show you on the calculator first. Okay, if I enter in the square root of 12 right here, notice the decimals, 3.46. So this portion is 4.88, and this is root 12 is 3.46. 3.46, and notice that they're not equal to each other, okay? Not only that, on the construction here, because these number lines that I have on the on this uh, lesson here are the same number lines. So if I come up here and mark off root 12, well, I don't know if I can actually because the compass may not be big enough. Let's try it. Oh, shoot, it's not big enough. Well, I can mark off two. Okay, you know what? Um, well, we'll do it this way. I can mark the distance past two. Okay, so the mark off the distance past 2. That I can do. Okay, so there's root 12 right there. So that's the distance past 2 for root 12. So watch this. I'm going to use this. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to mark off root 12. So I put it, I'll end it up at 2 right here. And then mark off where root 12 would be. That I can do. So this point right here, this is the square root of 12. Look at that. And so root 12, my friends, okay, root 12 does not equal to root 7 plus the square root of 5. Okay, it doesn't equal. Why? Because there are different positions on the number line. Okay, and so uh, when, you, when you answer the following questions here and down here, hopefully, you know, all this stuff makes sense now, now that we've done this here. Check it out. So this one here. Does root 7 plus root 5 and root 12 correspond to the same position on the number line? And the answer is no. No. Look at that. Root 12 is here. Right here. Okay, let me highlight it. Uh, root 12 is right here on the number line. Okay. And then root, um, root uh, this right here, root 7 plus root 5. Okay, it's this point which we called S right here, and it's at a different location. So the answer is no, they don't represent the same position. In other words, does are they equal? And the answer is no, okay? Uh-oh, what happened there? I can't, my digital tools are really acting funny. Okay, so let's just write it in again. So no, okay, they do not, they're not equal, as I keep on saying, all right? That's the root 7 plus root 5, as I said earlier, let's bring up the calculator again, is 4.88. So 4.88 approximately. Okay, these are approximates. I'll just underline it right there. All right, and root 12, as I said earlier, all right, is 3.46 approximately. So 3.46. All right, and so you can tell that by, just by using the calculator, that root 7 plus root 5 is not equal to 12, okay? Root 7 plus the square root of 5 does not equal root 12, so you can't add roots, okay? That's part of what you 
got to get out of this. You cannot uh, add unlike roots. Unlike, I mean, they're not the same. Roots. Okay. So uh, I already plotted the numerical positions on the number line. I compared it to 5. Obviously, 4.9 is less than 5. Uh, 3.46 is less than 3.5. Okay, so it's less than 3.5. And you can tell that uh, root 12, as I plotted it right here, is less than 3.5 because 3.5 is roughly about right here. There's, there's, I'm approximating now. All right, so it makes sense on the number line as well. So one of the key things about these constructions is that, you know, we're not just doing them to have fun and play around, okay? We're actually learning how to... Uh, uh, construct an irrational number on the number line and make sense out of it and discover the algebraic properties, okay? Meaning that you cannot add unlike roots. You can multiply them. You can even divide them, but you can't add or subtract them. It doesn't work that way. All right, and that's one of those major things about these constructions. Okay, uh, that's number five, all right? Part three in this series, all right? And... Uh, so you do your part, okay, and you work through uh, the constructions on your end. Try to learn something in the process, and I will see you in my next lesson. All right, this is Ainsworth. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.